Hey, I'm Decathlon Gamer, and welcome to Scorchlands. This is a game from the developer Ring Lab and Star Drifters. And this is a early access colony builder. It just released into early access earlier today. It's a resource management game, and it's got some interesting takes on, you know, a, a well-traveled genre, but I'm interested in seeing how this one plays out. I have had a chance to, to put a couple hours into it earlier in the day here since release, and I'm looking forward to introducing this title to you here on the game, available on Steam now. Having already been through the prologue and playing a little bit of the campaign, I feel pretty confident in getting up to speed relatively quickly on this one, but here is the campaign. Your task is to colonize a volcanic moon and fuel a gigantic structure called the Nexus in order to save your home planet. To achieve that, you will need to create networks of colonies, fight with dangerous magic spawn fauna, discover advanced technologies, and terraform the landscape with the help of both magic and science. And this is the Nexus. And you can see that the Nexus serves as a terraformer and it creates a landscape. It sets up an area only so big, but as you power it, as it gets stronger, it's going to expand the colonizable area. All right, so this is our character. Uh, we are an avian species of subtype. And you can see we have a hex based grid. And as we kind of open up, this is what's available to us now. So uh, we have a, a large mountainous area over here. We have some forests around. We have another large mountainous area over here and one gigantic lake that occupies a whole lot of land that we are going to need access to here in, in some way, some form, at some stage. That part's going to be tricky, but I think coming in through... Oh, well, that's not going to be great. Maybe right into this pocket is going to be a good place to start as I can get a couple colonies down there uh, relatively easy without too many issues. Though. All right, so the first resource we're going to take a look at is our population. And population is used for the colonies. And let's see, we have 19 now. I don't know actually how many exactly you need to have. Yes, that gets me around all sides. All right. So we're going to be a little aggressive on this first one, and maybe I can go both sides from there instead. That's going to give me a slightly better option. So this is a spire, and that spire, we had 19, didn't we? That used two population. Uh, you can see it comes with a grid, and that grid, that is where we can build. The spire uses magic, gives you control over a region so you can't just build anywhere you have to build surrounding these spires you can expand those areas in time but you can only build within them comes with a you know its own challenges uh, by having it set up that way but we're gonna want to get access surrounding these mountains here early on now me I can freely move about but um, those mountains are that now when it comes to buildings Buildings are free. They have no cost associated with them. This is all about resource management. The initial resource we're going to be working with is the stone from these mountains. And that is where we're going to be building these miners that are that are going to uh, surround. Now, you can see if I place one here, it has you know a one grid, one hex range to it. So if you surround it by three grids of stone, it by itself is going to collect three stone. There's also modifiers. So from here, it's only one stone that it would have access to, but you're going to modify the other one and upgrade it. We're going to add one and a half, but we're actually adding to that one and its output as well as there are bonuses. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and add fill up the area. And this is why I kind of picked this spot because you can get a bit more going. And I'm not worried about the woods here for now. 
that gives us a supply of 31 stone. You can actually exceed this, but it, it's just trade-off. It's constant. So we are looking to get around 31 in terms of usage. Once you exceed it, the possibility that the percentage starts to take a penalty. So you go from 100% access to a little bit less. So you, you can only exceed by so much. Uh, but the next upgrade is stone slabs. And you can see this one is dependent on what is around it. And with five buildings nearby, this is going to give us seven stone slabs. And that's huge. That uses up a decent amount of that. But that, with bonuses, already produces 14 stone slabs. And I would imagine we can get a good one. Yeah, back here, that's six. That gets us up to 26. But again, you want to use up kind of all of what you have access to. We still have 18 more. Back over here, 12 more. And one over here. Okay, we still have a positive balance. And so we'll push out a little bit further. And there, you can now see we have a remaining balance of 1.5. It's not a lot. It's, you know, you want to kind of get as close to zero as you can. So that gives us 60 stone slabs now, which is a pretty healthy total. Now, from there, we have a tech tree. And that tech tree requires stone tablets. Imagine, you know, that this is a mana-based game. It's magic. And these stone tablets are probably your spells. Uh, so we need to produce stone tablets. Now these still need to be produced within the area, but there are some modifiers that are gonna be nearby that are handy. Uh, so we're gonna make a row of stone tablets out here along the edge with those modifiers. Okay, that gives us 16 stone tablets. We still have 28 slabs, which is pretty awesome. Without bonuses, we'll put it over there. Ah, that's gonna hurt. Okay, I think that exceeded our total. It did. We would have added two more. We might go back and add those two more at some point here. But uh, let's add in our couple modifiers, and this is houses. Houses are going to change things, but you can see this is also gonna impact kind of what's going on down here, and it puts you down a little bit, hurts your numbers, doesn't necessarily help. Uh, the balancing thing takes a lot of tweaking, but because buildings are free, it's really easy to step in, step out, and make alterations and kind of find the formula that works because you have limited space. You have limited resources, so finding the balance is key. And as we are clearly over on stone slabs, I think we want to pull out at least one of these. There we go. And that keeps us right at 30. We have four here. And for now, that's that's a pretty good start. We, we have a pretty healthy balance on things and 30 stone tablets is tremendous. Now, like I said, this is a resource management where it's, it's a constant supply. Therefore, you don't just use it up. It doesn't go away and then you have to replace it. We have 30 stone tablets. That is 30 research. Now that is going to use up, but again, at that same sort of constant rate. So any research that we do, like picking up Logistics 1, it's going to cost us eight stone tablets, but that's that permanent trade-off. We need to, it's going to use up eight of the 30 we supplied. And as long as we continue to supply, we continue to get Logistics 1. All right. Now that leaves me with 22 more. I'm gonna take our colony limit bonus, as that only costs four. Colony limit two is only four additional, so we're at 14 now. Uh, radius cap is a beautiful thing to have here early on already, as we can afford it. Radius cap is going to expand, expand that radius of the area, which means I could actually do more with this space already. This is a really good first zone as we've really supplied ourselves with you know a pretty adequate number. Uh, unit development, we have enough to pay for that, but not terraforming, so we'll, we'll go ahead and take that one. And one colony, and we've already taken care of 
our first five tier one upgrades. Uh, certainly better than what I did the first time around. Learned some tricks here. It's now as you can see, there is that little bit of space remaining. Certainly not a uh, a bad thing to have that little bit of extra space. Some of that, at least, will be utilized in the near future. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and add in our second colony because there are still, as you saw, a few, couple research things left in Tier 1. And then we also need to access Tier 2 here at some stage. And so we want to get another 8, 15. So we need to get 23 more. Uh, before we can uh, push things into another phase. All right, you can see we also have a population of 26 now, so that, that's going to make things quite easy. All right, just decided to push it back a little bit. Let's uh, move it over just a slot here. Just thinking about what is to come after this. With 23 stone, I think we're a little bit behind on what we had on the other one, but of course that was why we selected it as our first location. And we should still be able to get a uh, quite healthy amount out of this one. There's nine left. Three left, and that's 40. 46, so we exceed the total a little bit, but it does still add slabs. There is that trade-off on on exceeding. All right, so that is 23 additional stone tablets. Now, one thing you can see here is these totals at the top. This is for this particular colony, not for everything we have. Each colony is independent, but some things are universal, and the universal ones are over here. So with 24 additional stone tablets, we are now looking at getting our other unlocks. And with just two colonies, we have unlocked the entirety of the tier one uh, upgrades. Now to get into tier two, the cost itself is straightforward and easy enough. It's just an additional eight stone tablets, but for what it serves a purpose of, uh, we're gonna have to get on with missions. And the missions are down here. So we've unlocked terraforming technology, but we have to supply essence to the Nexus to create a new biome, which is gonna give us access to new resource resources and that's where we get into all of that tier two stuff. So we need 10 dusty essence and it needs to be delivered to this big guy, which is the Nexus. It's another experimental and untested piece of equipment, just like the spires. And for this project, we need these bad boys. These are ether geysers. I think this is probably the ideal location from what I can gather. And once again, let me remind you that each of the colonies they have their own uh, resource management so here presently we have no no resources whatsoever this is uh, something that we are going to have to sort out but we need but what we need for this one is ether and the ether is gathered from these guys and so you can see you know getting a couple in the side here is going to give us quite the overlap these have a bit more range as they you know you get two per and 
what they do is they power these guys, which are the Dusty Essence. For every three ether, we're going to get one Dusty Essence. And for these, it doesn't matter about the range, so we can put these out here. All right, and so from a single colony, we've got ourselves 17 uh, Dusty Essence. Now, all we need presently, anyway, is 10, but it's got to be delivered to the Nexus. So we now get to get into the next phase, where all of these colonies are independent. They can share resources. We do that through logistics. And logistically, that's done through transfer lasers. Don't ask me about the tech. But <laughs> the idea, the concept here, is that we use lasers to move things about. I've got an idea. OK, so right now we have a cross beam right here. Uh, we have mirror catapults. Again, you can only build inside the area. Uh, let me see what the mirror catapult is going to do for us. I could connect two lasers right there. So th let's start with that part. I know this, this is easily achieved. So now we have a connecting laser. And what we can do is transfer and this doesn't transfer everything. This transfers a resource, but we can transfer the dusty essence. We can transfer all of it, and now it moves it over to this colony. So all of that product is now over here. I think one thing I can do, never mind connecting that other region for now. All right, we're going to go F and clear that. Okay, so that's gone away. We don't need to connect each one to each other. We need to connect to the Nexus. And oops. is that what I needed? I think it is. Rotate, 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 rotate. Oh no, it needs one more spot up. Okay. Easily fixed. Easily fixed. Ta da! Rotate, 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 rotate! Hey, I figured it out. Okay, now we just need to do the same thing as we did before and transfer this on to the Nexus. And ta da! So you can't build outside of the network, but the catapult will launch these mirrors, which can then be managed outside of your colony network and get you what you need. And with that, uh, we have finished the first phase of what we were up to here, which is getting power of a form to the Nexus. And this is kind of our Nexus control. The Nexus is, is what does the terraforming of the surface which, which makes it inhabitable and you just scale this up until you have everything you need there are going to be some additional challenges we face along the way but that is the basics of it now you can see that you're going to need the essence again and to get into the next tier entirely of the nexus we are going to need volatile essence for now we have dusty essence we have enough for the current amount but we're going to need more later on but what we are able to do here is we're able to in add a new biome into the region instead of just having this this grassland I suppose you would call that this type of biome I mean it's it's pretty standard grassland right it's not a large forest it's not necessarily a mountainous biome but here is what we're going to do. So, uh, 
the new placement you can see is going to be a desert. And for now, we can choose where it is we want this desert to be. Um, taking away from the lake, I think, is strongly advised as, well, we don't need that giant lake. We might need some water, but we definitely don't need a giant lake. So, placing it over the top of that half of the lake is going to be a good use of the biome. And yes, I think we're going to place this right over here. And so now we have added in the desert lands. It's the first of three biomes that we are trying to introduce as we level up. And you can see a whole new list of open resources to us that were not here previously. Being that this game is in early access, the amount of content in here is going to be somewhat limited, limited on day one. It's going to grow, it's going to change, and I would expect rather rapidly, especially as the community, the size of those playing it will help them identify you know, any bugs that, that may exist more rapidly to be able to give feedback more rapidly than you would through some sort of closed alpha you know, of the game. That being said, I am planning on doing a mini series for this one long enough to get through a few tiers of what we are introduced to within this game. I think this has been a wonderful first introduction as we've already completed the entirety of tier one over this time frame. So if you like what you see here, do please take a moment, drop below, click that like button, leave a comment regarding the game, what you think about it, and maybe something to help out with the algorithm so those uh, can see it like yourself and share this game out there because I think there is something pretty cool about this game. Uh, I, I am enjoying my time with it and look forward to bringing you the rest of this mini series in the near future. But that's going to do it for this one. I'm Decathlon Gamer. Like I said, like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Be safe out there. Bye for now.